It's interesting, you know, scientists who study the human body and mind and brain, in recent years they've researched a lot about this ability of the mind and the brain to change itself, to renew itself. And they call it neuroplasticity. You know that term? You know that word? Plasticity means to, to put in a flexible, a malleable condition. And this neuroplasticity, this is the, the power to re rewire, remold the, literally the biochemical and electrical pathways and the patterns that define who we are or who we think we are, which in this world is pretty much amounts to the same thing. And how blessed we are to have been given really the pure distillation of India's ancient science of neuroplasticity. That's one way of thinking of the yoga science of meditation. It spiritualizes the brain cells. And it's in our own highest benefit. It's in our highest benefit to remember always to put those techniques into practice. And remember, as Guruji said, the self-improving man is the increasingly happy man. Self-improving. We can use these techniques to literally rewire our brain, to free ourselves into a vaster realm of new possibilities. Now, I bring this up today for one reason. Because, if you think about it, in essence, the most effective technique of neuroscientific transformation of our lives, our personality, our habits, our moods, our whole being, these are embodied in the guru-disciple relationship. The most powerful and effective techniques of neuroscientific transformation. And in that most holy of all human relationships, that's what we're reverently celebrating today. And if we truly understand what the guru is and how to attune ourselves with the guru, that will change us. It will change us. It will evolve us. It will exalt us more quickly and more surely than any other protocol or system of personal growth or healing ever discovered. Think about that. You all know the techniques that I'm talking about. Just by lifting the gaze and the position of the eyes to the Christ Consciousness Center, the center of Kutasta Chaitanya, that eternal consciousness at the point between the eyebrows, as we're taught in the lessons. Just by doing that, we begin the process of remolding our brain pathways. It puts the Consciousness in a receptive state, in a plastic state, you might say. And it attunes the consciousness to the higher forces. That's the first step, the first phase of the yoga techniques. And the second one, again, that we know from the lessons, the second one is the practice of pranayama, especially Kriya Yoga. We have to realize, we have to apply, we have to cling to that realization that by long and deep meditation, the way that Guruji has taught us in the Kriya Yoga science, first of all, the life energy or prana, it's pulled away from its outer flow, from its dissipation in the outer world, in the muscles, in the senses, and the restless mind, and it becomes powerfully concentrated in the spine and brain. That life force, that prana, that has the power to rewire the neural pathways. That's the power of this yoga science of divine transformation. And then it gets so deep and so beautifully sweet and personal because after applying those first two steps, then if we continue to gaze into that spiritual center and the point between the eyebrows and the spiritual eye, and we deeply deeply call to God and Guru, or deeply affirm again and again any 
change or improvement that we want to be manifest in our consciousness and in our life, we will receive from the superconscious mind the divine grace that gradually and sometimes even instantaneously transforms us. My friends, these are, this is just a small part of the, you might say, the deeper esoteric aspect of the guru-disciple relationship. It's science. It works. And I can't recommend strongly enough or often enough to make the SRFYSS lessons a regular part of your daily routine. Now, I know many of you have completed the 18 basic lessons in the new series and the new expanded Kriya Yoga lessons. Now go on with the supplement lessons from our Guru that were made available in recent months and will go on for a few years. What a wonderful way that is to continue in the divine blessings and power that we've experienced during this centennial year of SRF. A wonderful way to continue in that, in that trend. And all of what I'm talking about here is in those lessons. All of these techniques, all of these powerful tools to take the inspiration of the higher divine Christ consciousness, the energy and enthusiasm of the new year, and infuse it with the blessings of the good or disciple relationship and use that to launch ourselves into a new life in this coming year. It's all there in the lessons. Believe me, if you take them seriously, if you take them reverently, they'll change your life. And in doing so, help to change the world. <laughs>